Hello and welcome to the Comedy Slab podcast. I'm Shane O'Connor, he's Adrian Lacey. We have been likened to a latter-day hinge and bracket, <laughs> but, um, but with better frocks and not-so-nice hairdos. Smashing smocks, I would say. I don't but which one's which? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Is there any stigma with being one or the other? I mean, I don't. Uh, has anyone I'm, ever I'm, thought over there's saying, a stigma in being either of them? Do, I would say. Do you mind? I'm not hinged. How dare you? <laughs> I'm, I'm much bracket. more like bracket. <laughs> Am I a round bracket or an old square bracket? Or an old hinge? I don't. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Anyway, mm. uh, if you've not heard the uh, the podcast before, Adrian and I get together every week and we choose a comedy. He chooses one one week, and I choose one uh, the following week, and we alternate like that. Um, <laughs> and um, we uh, we critique it. We play three clips, which we'll have of this week's comedy, and uh, we tell you what we thought of it. It's uh, completely and utterly. Uh, subjective. In fact, if there's any objectivity in the whole of the podcast, um, then I'll uh, I'll edit it out. Because yes, please do. Well, as Woody Allen said, objectivity is subjective. Exactly. So I don't know where that leaves us. Yeah. Um, I was just saying earlier that uh, I, I'm under an awful lot of pressure to um, <laughs> to choose something that I think you. There's there is something. Well, isn't it weird how the human condition wants to do that? I want to choose something that that you'll. You'll come away and go, oh, Shane, that was fantastic. Oh, do you know what? I really love that. And I'm going to watch the whole of the eight series of it tonight. <laughs> like, that's going to happen with me. Yeah, true. Um, but there is, do you ever feel that? Or is it just me? Is it, am I just... No, I, I want you to like what I like, but I, I have hunches. Uh, maybe it's the way I see it. No, it's all right, no but T-shirt. It... <laughs> but the point is, there is that, uh, what my brother calls, the random chicken factor... You can try, it's, it's like online dating, you know, the computer can match so many things and I can think, well, in theory, he likes a comedy duo, one half of which he's liked in this other show, but, you know, you don't know until the first date whether you're actually going to get on. I've I've never gone that far. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't pick it thinking, oh, I'll pick this because you'll like it, but I do pick something and then think, Oh, I wonder if he will like it. Oh, I hope he does. Oh, well, like I think it. I meant more the latter. But if I'm <clears throat> if I'm doing a mental calculation about the likelihood of you liking it, yeah. Uh, if I really like it, if I'm passionate, I can be evangelical. Perhaps we all can. But uh, and I, I, yeah, I do want to win you over. But there's also I have to reserve a part of me for disappointment. Yeah. Well, I don't know what we're going to get this week. <laughs> the reason that I mention it this particular week is that I did spend an awful lot of time watching um, the uh, the show that I've chosen in question. And thinking, I'm not sure he's going to like this. Will he like it? I don't really know. Oh dear, what have I done? But at least um, it wasn't like um, uh, oh, what was the one that we that was 50 minutes? Um, good Omen. Good. I, I could I could never remember the name of that blooming program. Uh, good uh, Omens, which was 50 minutes. So that was a hundred minutes because we watched them twice of you scowling and muttering my name <laughs> under your breath. Which, was I that bad? Which because um, this is only like twenty one minutes, isn't it? I think so. Um, this and, one is, yeah. I think that's why you chose it, so I can claim some of my life back. Yeah, I'm thinking I've given you back in drip feed over the weeks. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to. keeping you, double entry bookkeeping accounts. So. Yes, yeah, if I give you a whole fifteen minutes back, you just go mad and ruin it. So I didn't <laughs> want to do that. Um, so the show I chose this week is an animated, an adult animated series, I think they call it, don't they? Mm-hmm. Um, called um, Archer. And mm-hmm. uh, as I said last week, it's uh, it's about a an agent who fights the forces of evil. Not a theatrical <laughs> agent, as Adrian the first. <laughs> darling, darling, you're evil. <laughs> Sit down. Have you, let's have talk you seen about the it. box office for this? It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's satanic. Uh, but a secret agent um, working for the uh, rather unfortunately, and I'm sure we'll discuss this a bit later, uh, unfortunately named ISIS. Um, yes. But um, yeah, I, I mean, it's very different from anything we've done so far on the slab, isn't it? This. Uh, it is, and it's very different from any other animation I think I've seen. I can't think of a sort of. Uh... <laughs> It's a 007 send up, and I suppose W 007 to some extent is a send up, but it's um yeah, it's a send up of a send up, isn't it? Really? It was, yeah, um, it is. Yeah, um, I still can't tell whether you like it or not. I think we should have a feature, <laughs> shouldn't we? As uh, guests, 
guess is it a, is it a scowly face or a happy face? What is it going to be <laughs> this week? Maybe not. I don't know. Um, anyway, first thoughts. Uh, anything you want to throw in for uh, for Archer the animated? I mean, how do you stand on ad- adult animated series for a start? Are you um have you ever have you ever read um um what do they what do they call them uh, illustrated novels? <laughs> we used to call them graphic comics. novels. Yeah, Comic, exactly. Comics when I was. A kid. I used to call it uh, yeah. Um, Oh gosh, it's gone. I had something called the Topper. Do you remember that? I don't yeah. think anyone else had the Topper. Yeah, yeah. Oh, obviously you then. It was it was the, wasn't it Companion to the Beezer? Oh, could well be. Did they fold into each other? Pardon the pun. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the Beano was by far more more popular. But of course, me being the perverse sort, I just latched on to. Uh, it's like going for the underdog. Although there was a monkey in it, wasn't there? A chimpanzee or something. Anyway, <laughs> the um, under monkey. I, <laughs> under monkey. <laughs> Which, <laughs> don't confuse me. I did re- I did buy some. Um, do you know there are some quite uh, intellectual? Well, you, you obviously do. There are some quite intellectual books in the form of graphic novels. Oh, yeah. I got one on Wittgenstein, the flipping philosopher, for goodness sakes. Right. And then I ended up thinking, is this any better? Is it any more understandable? Because it's got pictures. Because the pictures don't really help an awful lot with the philosophy. But hey. I've got to be interested. I've got to be interested. I've got to be. Um, I've got to be, be honest. Joking. I don't know why I've got to be interested. <laughs> You've got to be drunk if you're trying to get your words out. It was Freudian. I'm not interested. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be okay. honest. I, I, if somebody came to me and said, "What do you say? A graphic novel?" They call them, don't they? Not I think so. Yeah. 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 If somebody came to me and said, oh, "Would you like this?" I'd be like, mm, you know, a little bit, a little bit, sort of poo pooby about it. Um, mm. But I actually interviewed a guy who wrote and made one. And right. I mean, professionally top, really good. I was fat. I wish I'd have grabbed it because I think it's on the bookcase behind me. But, um, right. and it, it just blew me away. I, I'll be honest with you. I thought there were, there was so, uh, this was about um, drugs and drug culture. Mm. So it's kind of contemporary piece that he'd done. Um, but it was just, he's such a talent. You know, you kind of think, and so I think I kind of like that. And I also I had a load of hand me downs of Marvel and DC comics from my brother, who's a bit older than me, right? Um, and used to read those over and over, just pour over those again and again. I just thought they were they were fantastic. So I'm kind of into that. But so are you? How are you on the old? Do you watch? I mean, you don't watch Family Guy. You don't watch The Simpsons. You're not a guy that I would have thought gravitates towards. I, I've I've watched each of those shows in the past, but nothing like. I mean, I'm not a completist. I'm the opposite of a completist. I'm a partialist. I watch a couple of you know me. I watch a couple of episodes, uh, and even if I enjoy it, it's right. Okay, I get it. And um, Simpsons, I think, is more. I mean, I I raised with my brother-in-law, for instance, um, who has three daughters, and I said, "Well, I found the Simpsons just a bit lightweight." And he said, "Well, it's family viewing. It's mm. almost like." Yeah, and your point is, Adrian, mm. he didn't do it in a nasty way, but it's, right, okay. He Because he, um, the kids aren't kids anymore, they're in their 20s, but he knew it's one of those reassurance things, and you'll want this more and more as your kids grow up. They're obviously uh, substantially younger than my nieces, but um, it's just the absolute assurance that you could put that on. It's like a trusted brand, isn't it? You mm. know, It's not going to cause any embarrassment, not going to cause awkward questions necessarily. Um, although kids can always think of some, um, and uh, and you can cuddle up and all enjoy it. I, the, it's interesting because I think this Archer has parallels to more to Family Guy because I think you're right. Family Guy's edgier, isn't it? Mm, yeah, it is more for grown ups, isn't it? Uh, yeah, and you know you could watch if you watch Family Guy with your children. I think you'd be answering a lot of questions. Like, <laughs> what, does, what, what does that mean? And they would take a lot uh, a lot longer to answer than the show itself. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Anyway, should we give people a taste if they're never caught up with Archer? Because I don't think it, it. Funnily enough, it is actually on UK terrestrial TV now. It's just started showing. On, it? Yeah, on D Max, um, on um, which is on Freeview. Um, right. Don't ask me what number. I think it's in the thirties or forties or something like that. Uh, I'll try and find it in a minute, actually, because I've got to. T- if I if I just switch my TV on, I switch the sound down. I'll try and find it in, while we're doing the clips. Uh, but it's just started showing. I don't know what series, but just started showing on D Max. So it has actually uh, hit 
uh, the UK. But I don't think it's made much of the, the kind of impression in the UK as it has in the US. I think it was on the FX channel in the US. Mm. And um, so I'm not really sure whether people are kind of be aware of what it even sounds like, never mind what it looks like, really. So shall we have a, shall we have a quick clip? Just to, mm. Do you just, want to set the scene? Okay. Um, Archer, as I said, is a, is a, is a spy. Um, he's a, a secret agent, whatever you want to call it. Um, and of course, uh, you mentioned 007 James Bond. I mean, <clears throat> along with that, he's kind of got the gram- glamorous lifestyle. And of course, part of that glamour is his home life. is uh, is very uh, is very much of a uh, a seductive personality, shall we say? So he's <laughs> uh, he's quite popular with the ladies. But at home, he's also got um, as all best sort of um, uh, heroes of uh, novels have uh, a butler. Uh, but, but his butler Woodhouse is <laughs> not Jeeves. <laughs> I wondered about that actually. Um, yeah. He's um, he's he's getting on in years anyway. And um. Archer um, is not the nicest person to him. In fact, here he is laying down again the ground rules to Woodhouse. It's a short list, Woodhouse. Yes, sir. Two things we don't allow in here, what are they? Dogs and your mother. That's a very short list, isn't it? Uh, yes, but what? you were quite what? Uh, what was I? insistent that an exception be made. No, 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 because forget the dog rule, because this pug is amazing. Watch this. Abigail, go. <laughs> Do you not hear that? That's putting on the Ritz, man. I'm always insistent, Woodhouse. Yes, sir. But I'm not to be trusted, am I? No, sir. But- Stop. Uh, Shut up. I have to go. But if I find one single dog here when I get back, I'll rub sand in your dead little eyes. Very good, sir. I also need you to go buy sand. Yes, sir. I don't know if they grade it, but... Of course. Uh, right. Okay, here's the honest truth. Oh. Um, what I would have said to you after one viewing would be completely different than after two viewings. Oh. Uh, um, uh, but do you want to guess which way around it was? Well, I can't. You see, uh, there were more titters than I expected there from your end. Um, go and titter down the your own end. end. You the are. top end, I'd have to say. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, I I would say you didn't like it as much at first as you did the second one. Yeah, I must have been in a terrible mood the first time. I'll tell you what, in mitigation, it was... Uh, Quite possibly the hottest day in England ever since records began and since ever began. So maybe I was a bit tetchy from that and uh, tired. Yeah. I just, I, I remember thinking um, at the end of it, it was, this isn't for me. This is just absolutely not my style. And then today, another viewing and a more careful viewing, as we tend to do slightly more analytical the second time through. Uh, first time through, he's trying to watch without prejudice to misquote George Michael in a slightly different context. <laughs> uh, um, but uh, yeah, second time through, I, I mean, I had to replay some things. There's some stuff thrown away. Um, but generally, I, I mean, yeah, it's wise cracking and it's fun. And he's an anti hero, isn't he, really? Yeah. Um, Do you know, I couldn't, this is what I couldn't reconcile, actually. And I'm glad you said that because. We've talked about this before about you know you if you like the hero, or if you like the main character, that generally is a recipe for success. And I all the way through watching this, I was thinking exactly that. I thought, God, he's such a horrible character. Mm. Why do I still root for him? Did you come up with an answer? Because I'm still asking myself the same no, question. No, I don't. I don't know. The only thing I can think is is that he is is because he's cast in the mould of a hero. That's the only thing I can think is that because he's an agent and he's on our side, as it were, mm. you know, you assume. Um, I wouldn't be so sure. But no, yeah. I, I wouldn't That's either. The theory. It depends. It depends. You know what he can get out of it, really. But yeah. I, I, that's the only thing I think. But I did you have that as well? You kind of go through thinking, God, he's horrible. Yeah, well, I've got um, a, a special reason to think that since uh, I was writing a script recently that I've ended up having to bin because um, a couple of mates who read it independently, one a pro and one just a 
well, virtually a professional TV viewer. Uh, if you if he could get paid for watching telly, he'd watch even more if there's any more hours in the day. But mm. I, I trust their opinion. And they um, both of them said they can't work. The, no one can like this character. So I find myself thinking from a, a writer's point of view, so what is it? But I think there was a clue in that last clip, if you think about it. He has got some self-awareness. And he said... Yeah, but I'm not to be trusted, am I, to his <laughs> butler? So he does know he's a complete worm. Yeah. And is that enough? Maybe I don't know. It, But he's just... I don't. And then I was thinking, well, is, is it the other characters are even less likeable? I mean, there's nobody that stands out that you think you'd feel sorry for, is there, in any of the characters <laughs> in that episode? No, they're... Um, yeah, they are to a man and woman... All flawed, horrifically flawed in some cases. Yeah. Uh, irredeemably flawed, but in a way, I mean, it's it's the old Faulty Towers thing, isn't it? You shouldn't like uh, Basil Faulty, but of course you do. You shouldn't really like Alan Partridge. Victor Meldrew. Victor Meldrew. He's a he's a curmudgeon, I, isn't he? You know, but I don't actually like him. But I like Richard Wilson though. It's, so that's some uh, mitigation. Uh, it's re- it's a real dilemma for me. It was it's exactly the same. Mm. I'm thinking I don't understand why I'm rooting for this guy because he's just horrible. But if you, yeah, obviously some mitigation is if you can be funny with it. You could be funny and horrible, but but very often people who are horrible, even if they try to be funny in the real world, we won't find them funny because they're horrible. Right. So we ain't going to laugh at their jokes, but but. Uh, yeah, it's a bit different here, and obviously we're in the fictional world. The, the other thing that stands out for me with Archer is, is what is the, the way that they make it. It's called limited animation. Have you come across this before? Where I was, I was going to raise it. I mean, I, it's where you've only got a certain amount of action, foreground, and yeah, it's cheap, isn't it? I, I guess so. Yeah, I mean, I, I learned a lot about animation reading about it. They're saying that it's it's also th- what they call thick line animation as opposed to thin line animation which is which is things like family guy and the simpsons um mm. but yeah there's this they're only animating basically the head and the arms a lot of the time aren't they mm. and again you might get a bit of background movement if they're moving but it won't be sophisticated 3d type no and, and so again, know. you sh- you should sit there and think, ah, oh, that's rubbish. But it's got a stylization, hasn't it? Then that that kind of, mm. I don't know what it is that it's it's like you look on paper and you think this shouldn't work. The sum of all the parts. I mean, we talked about the way that it looks. Talked about um, the um, you know the the dialogue and all the rest of it. But the whole sound of the thing. I mean, I by accident. It was only because my son was asleep. I, I the first episode. I I watched and listened to it on headphones. Mm. Did you listen to it on headphones at all? It sounds gorgeous. It oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, animation often is. Um, I mean, it's it's a joy. I've not worked on much animation and on the sound side of things, but you've got such freedom. And uh, but it also yeah, it does sound like it's. The template is sort of film quality soundtrack, isn't it? And, and yet, I read somewhere that it was it was like it wasn't until about series six that they decided this is all library music that they used, and it wasn't mm. until series six that they actually got somebody on board to start writing music for, for the show. Well, I worked on um, Grange Hill on the dubbing side of things, and I learned a lot on that show. And one of them was. You can make library music. I did some things that, I mean, if people know music theory at all, I made four, four pieces into five, four bars, extending things that shouldn't work, but because they were tucked under action and because it worked with the action, get away with murder. Yeah. But, I mean, still, ideally, if it was me making it, if I had the budget, I'd want uh, my own musical direction, all of that. But you can get away with um murder in in various guises it's not to denis denigrate um library music Sorry. it was you that uh that turned the sex pistols anarchy in the uk into uh, into a waltz wasn't it i think was uh... i think it was for elevator music they wanted it for and uh, yeah i just cleaned it all up just like that it's a miracle rinky tinky tinky um yeah I, 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 so you know the sound of it the look of it and then mm. the script itself. 
I mean, again, the script wasn't sophisticated, but you find no, yourself. But, well, it wasn't. It was. I thought. It, I thought it was clever. It was a very witty and very wise cracking. It's sort of harking back to sort of. I, I don't know much about these things, but um, I've dabbled in a little of uh, sort of American radio in the nineteen thirties and forties drama. Oh, yeah. Like well, like the Dick Barton um, kind of thing. And there's, there's always something I quote, uh, this comes from a film rather than uh, radio, but that sort of the classic black and white Hollywood idol era uh, where um, a, a, an agent type says to a grand dame he wants to bed, uh, I didn't catch your name, to which she says, I didn't drop it. Uh, you know, fantastic, crisp dialogue that you'd never ad lib like that or you'd never hear it in the street. It's kind of my Westy sort of stuff, isn't it? That kind yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. Come of. up and yeah. see me. Yeah, yeah. And it's quotable. Um, talking about some of the ladies in it, should we have another clip? Because I think that uh, that leads nicely into um, <laughs> our next clip. Um, yes. The whole of this episode revolves around um, uh, Archer. He's kind of fiddling his expenses, isn't he? I think he's uh, he's, mm. he's he's been or he's he's on the verge of being caught. Um, using his expenses for all kinds of uh, for things that he shouldn't have done, um, and what we also learn in this episode that his boss, the head of uh, the the organisation that he works for, ISIS, is um, is actually his mother as well, and uh, we catch up with Archer um, having a meeting with his mother, and to put it bluntly, she is not happy. For your information, I've just been reviewing your operations account. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. And it makes for fascinating reading. No. Let's see. You turned in an expense report from Berlin where the German desk says you never checked in. Oh, uh, Berlin was... Ditto Buenos Aires. Um, Too busy to check was, in. Yeah. Or already off to Monaco. I'm spying my lot. Or was it Mallorca? Um, Ooh, or Tunis. Tunis. Kind of rings a bell. ISIS isn't your own personal travel agency. It doesn't exist just so you can jet off to Whore Island. That's not a real place. I have 50 agents who literally kill to move up to your position. And if you don't square your operations account by Monday, they won't need to. Your position will be vacant. Sterling? Hmm? Sorry, I was picturing Whore Island. Have I made myself clear? Are you, you're you looking for the answer yes. Yes. Then yes. Good. Then get out. And for God's sake, take a shower. Now, this is the point at which I think we warn people. Well, you have used the word adult. It very definitely isn't for the kids. We're not going to see this on CBBC or any other service for juniors anytime soon. No. It's not squeaky clean Disney. Just because it's animation, do not earthlings be fooled. So um, that comes with a health warning. You've clipped round it, if I can use that expression, very neatly. I, when I watched it, I thought, how's he going to find anything clean enough? But uh, a, a millisecond after we came off that clip, there's something that would have taken so much explaining and you'd have to send the children's out, children out of the room <laughs> yeah, but good. Good on your shears, if I may say so, Mister Billy Shears. Do you know what? I, I, at one point, I thought it was it might have been gratuitously adult. He was trying to mm. prove a point. You know, very early on, I thought, oh, is this is this trying to be? Oh, look how adult we are. We can we can f and Jeff and talk about adult content and, and sex and drugs and rock and roll and all the rest of it. But I, I think that's an unfair summation, actually. Don't you think? I don't think it is gratuitously adult. Well, it depends where you draw your line of um, gratuity. Uh, I, I usually add about 10%. In fact, there is a joke about tips, isn't there? Yeah. And, and sometimes you end up feeling like the dirty one yeah. because you've interpreted something one way and then, of course, they pull the rug from under your feet. Actually, no, it's your filthy mind. Yeah. We meant this clean thing. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we're, it, it kind of judges you, dear friends. So... Gratuitous. No, I mean, it's all telling the story, isn't it? And, you know, if you, if you want the Waltons, go and watch the Waltons, is my advice, and mm. don't watch this if you think it's going to upset you. But um, I think, well, what passes for adult humour is very often quite childish, isn't it? But with yeah. adult references yeah. and ad adult words. But, you know, um, that doesn't necessarily mean they're all terribly mature and grown up. In fact, you struggle to find anyone who was. Maybe the butler comes off as the least worst. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's, he's the least powerful, I guess. 
yeah, he, he just kind of says, yes, sir, no, sir. That's more or less his line, isn't it, really, I guess? I think um, so. The the interesting thing was there was he kept saying to his mother, uh, Johnny Bench called. Did you did you, did you hear that? Yeah. Now what I was going to ask you about that, and then I worried that if I asked you while we were recording, yeah, it itself was a filthy reference. It that is you struggled to explain. Yeah, yeah, it is. I can't I can't tell you the full connotation, but I can oh, tell you you're dear. absolutely right. It is a it is a filthy reference. Um, but it, it's <laughs> it's an American pop culture thing, and. I really like that. I, I don't think there's something wrong with me because I do this all the while. I love it when Family Guy makes mm. a reference to something that is is predominantly US based, and they make oh it's you know in a flashback, and they say oh it's like so and so, and you think well who's so and so? I don't even know who they are, and then you look them mm. up and find out. Generally on Wikipedia, it will say they were involved in this scandal. It was referenced <laughs> on Family Guy on this episode, <laughs> <laughs> but. Having to work that little bit harder and kind of think, oh, I'm not in on the joke. Ah, that's what the joke is. Okay, kind of thing. Mm. I I kind of like that, but I know a lot of people won't like that. Now, can I query this? I don't know if this itself is an in-joke or I don't know what it is or whether I've misinterpreted, but our hero or anti-hero, Sterling Archer, which is nearly Sturmy Archer. I, yeah. He's got all the gear, hasn't he? But, um, <laughs> that will mean oh, you something would, You to... wouldn't want to get saddled with a name like that, would you? Oh, here we go. This will mean nothing to you if you weren't a cyclist back in the 70s. Are they still going, Sturmy Archer? Sturmy Archer, I don't think. Weren't they, weren't they bought by Rally or something like that? Or oh, Sir Walter. Yeah. Anyway, and Rally is no more, is it? No. We're certainly not making in Nottingham. Where it used to be. I thought they were. Um, I thought they still got a little little factory making tiny little bicycles. Oh, I thought they'd all been offshored or <laughs> anyway. Well, well, Isle of Wight. <laughs> <laughs> Isle of you. No, before people talk, Chris Parnell, who plays Cyril Figgis, lovely name, interesting character. Yeah. He's got the look of the hero, hasn't he? And our hero does not look like the actor who plays him, H. John Benjamin. No. No, it's I mean, just... that's not coincidence, is it? Chris Parnell, I'm going to click on what, what I'm looking at is a you know a little um, thumbnail. Yes, he is. The Visually, the hero is based on a, another actor stroke character, which I've never come across before. That's I mean, there's thing. no reason you could do what you want in the world of animation, but, but that just struck me. The other thing is, now more controversially, yeah. I think, make of this what you will, but uh, isn't... Um, a sort of, can I say ball breaker without getting a certificate? Yeah. The the harder-edged Lana Kane. Now, is her character name, but that is a character name, is that based on Lana Kane, the anti-itch cream? Oh, yeah, I didn't pick up on that one, yeah. Just float that idea. Yeah. Oh, the scratch is making me itch. But she's played by a black actress, if I'm not greatly mistaken. Yeah. Uh, and she's a white character. No, now, she's, I think she's supposed to be, I think she's supposed to be of colour. Oh, is she? Yeah, right. I think I did. I just don't think it's uh, it's it's there's there's a line in it which I don't really want. To, again, I don't want to get too adult. But there's quite an adult line in there um, mm. where they're watching they're watching a video, and um, that kind of suggests that she is. I, I thought she was supposed to be, but it's not. Oh, they're watching a mixed race show. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> that you might not show your children. Like love thy neighbour. <laughs> <laughs> Only difference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just a pawn in another chess game. We're becoming um, anyway. more and more obscure as we go on, aren't we, really? We might I as think well we just give just it a say, certificate and just be honest. We should say effort, yeah, to get on with it. <laughs> we might make our, make our minds up afterwards. Yeah. Um, she has been in Modern Family. That's not the same as Family Guy, though, is no, it? No, that's a live-action sitcom, Modern Family. I couldn't get on with that. I, I, tried, I tried that. It's... Um... Um, maybe it's one you have to get in on the ground floor with a lot of these. You know, you have to watch the first few episodes where they establish everything. Um, which right. I've got to say, I thought this episode, that, that was when you're talking about the writing, you thought it was quite clever. Didn't they do mm. well, as Brucey once said, <laughs> didn't they do Did well they? to establish everything? You know, what it was well, all actually, about. I, I managed to forget, while I was watching it, I forgot it was Series 1, Episode 1, because I just felt not in the club, as it were. Um, and uh, so it was only afterwards I looked at my notes from last week, reminding myself, yes, this was Series 1, Episode 1. Uh, 
Yeah, well, it, I suppose that's the ultimate compliment, isn't it? That I, I kept up with it, but at the same time, it felt like the story was already had hit the ground running. It's it's which a is real what you want, isn't it? thin line, isn't it, between love and hate? Oh no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> between between that being over simplistic in the way you explain. Mm. Yeah, hello, so and so. You're my secretary. How are you today? Kind of yes. dialogue, and and being able to to you know kind of explain it and 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 sort of work out all the relationships with people. I thought they trod that quite well. I thought they did quite well with that. To be honest with you, interesting fact. I don't know if you know this or if you can mm. tell this that um, it takes thirteen weeks to make an episode of Archer. Um, they make four in tandem. Mm-hmm. And they use about one page of dialogue per minute. But the really interesting thing, and you might like this, being a bit of sound guy, we've already done the gag. Um, yes, is that the lines are recorded individually? Right, so not an ensemble uh, no, acting piece. They're not. They're not. I don't think they're in the same room at the same time as they're recorded. Now, years ago, years and years ago, I did. I did. I wrote something, and and I I recorded it with a cast, um, and. We did that. We recorded it individually and then edited it together. I've mm. never known anyone else do it since. Or you well, know. I've I've done it because we just simply didn't have an actress available on the day. I did a spoof on a TV drama commissioner. We must get onto our um, is it third and final clip um, shortly? But uh, yes, it's it's doable. And um, could you tell? No, no, I couldn't. And you shouldn't be able to, of course. Um, Actors are so used to, particularly these days, now the the days of multi-camera studio stuff where you're, you're playing everything in real time and mm. sitcoms in front of audiences in real time and all of that. They're so used to having, uh, I nearly said, a spotty teenager reading in the other character. That, that's cruel to teenagers and to spots, of which <laughs> I still occasionally have one. But, you know, like you, you could have someone with no animation at all just reading in what's that in the road ahead and you have to pick it up with full animation like that yeah and um but they're so used to doing that you know any actor worth their salt will will manage that and any sound engineer will be able to uh, as long as no one overlaps lines that's the big no-no and yeah. as long as they give everything and tell the story um and i really enjoyed uh, assembling it because i i felt all powerful you're a bit of a god figure uh, although it'd be I, I was my own director but you say when that line begins and does it overlap yeah. when you finally edit it and mix it. Yeah, you can if, if I mean if you're not working with actors, I mean when I when I did my thing, I wasn't working with actors really. They were just ordinary people in a in a way. Um mm. not that actors aren't ordinary people. Oh, oh by <laughs> that the way sounded like a Chris Langham thing. Yeah. Um people like us. People like us, yeah. Ooh. Um and apologies for people who thought that Adrian was being cruel to salt. He wasn't. Um, <laughs> I, I, and so you you can, like you say, if you think, oh, I actually wanted them to over-talk that line or um, mm. I wanted a bit more space there, you you have you have the – it's the ultimate director's tool, isn't it, in a way? Yeah, you can, yeah. You could just move them out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, final clip then. Yeah, set her up, love. Um it's a simple one, really. We mentioned that uh, that Archer has been uh, investigated for um, uh, anomalies in his expenses and what he's been spending them on. So he decides the best thing to do is to break into his own headquarters um, and uh, get on the computer and sort his own expenses out. But whilst he's in the process of doing this, he gets disturbed. Hey, I was uh, just talking about you and about how this isn't what it looks like. A lot of that going around. Yeah, it's an epidemic. For example, my real name is Kremensky. Is that sound... Is that Jewish? It's Russian. Um, Russian Jewish? I'm the mole, idiot. What? I made up the mole. Yes, but you told Pam. And now everyone is looking for a real mole. God, do we hate Pam. So I have to escape. And irony. But thanks for breaking into the mainframe for me. Double irony. Because I'll need 50000 for travel expenses. 50000 From your account. That's too much. It's all last-minute bookings. For two. Wh- oh. Because when I hand the notorious Duchess to the KGB, I won't just get a promotion. I'll get my own Dacha. Too bad you'll never see it. What the? Oh. 
Lana, Crenshaw's a mole, and his name's not really Crenshaw, it's Kremensky. Definitely Russian, possibly a Jew. I don't know. Thoughts? Yeah, shut up. And you, drop it. Or what? No, 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 do not wind her up. That is a big gun, and she is baby crazy. <gasps> baby crazy? <laughs> That's why I dumped her. <laughs> Uh, right, okay. Having said, don't wind her up, of course, that's precisely what he does. So, um, and, and in that, he doesn't have the awareness to know he's doing precisely the thing he's telling the other guy not to do. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, this, I just love the, the Jewish obsession. It's like, talk about an irrelevance. Yeah. And, and the pauses are very funny. I mean, we just talked about how you can change the timing. Maybe they put extra pauses in at the edit. Um, but they're, they're cheekily long. And, and of course, with an animation, if anything, uh, you usually tighten things up because you can't, you don't tend to have the same um, degree of focus on a face that's unanimated, as it were. But they know, don't, they once, don't once, shy away from that, do they? They don't care. No, they're not afraid of it. They you, don't care. You, it's it's a kind of it's almost daring us to be offended by it. They, or they'll show actually. Well, I'm, I mentioned it's on the terrestrial TV. I'm just watching the trailer for it actually now on the uh, on the TV. You're not really listening to me, are you? You're just no. watching telly with the sound down. You see, they put it on at ten o'clock at night, so you kind of think, oh, it is it is in an adult slot anyway, isn't it? So there's no there's no doubt that it is adult content kind of thing. But yeah, they're not afraid to like have four or five seconds on a face that isn't moving, and then right at the very end, the eyebrow will twitch. <laughs> And you think, Half the joke. It's yeah. sort of making a virtue of this uh, low budget animation, I think. Yeah. I, I, do you come away thinking low budget then? I'm not. I, like, because well, I mentioned the word stylized before, and I don't know whether. I didn't. I didn't come away feeling it was like, oh, that was cheap looking. But did you? I did make it. I'm just trying to look at my notes. I, it sort of featured at some. Uh, oh no! Actually, I put cheap music at one point because it sounded very synthesized. Right. But again, it, it's the point that you referred to, isn't it? Um, yeah, I think they they just use what they, what they call um, needle drop stock music to uh, to to use as music. You mentioned Bond. The other the other reference, the other the other uh, uh, inspiration. Um, mm. He he said that he had um, when he um, when he came up with the idea, Adam Reed. Um, which I loved as well. It's, I don't know if you saw this, but he he had a show cancelled, mm -hmm. um, and um, they cancelled his show. And he he went to Spain on holiday, and he just came up with the idea of Archer and just came bouncing back. He was he did a thing called Frisky Dingo, um, <laughs> which <laughs> great title. That sounds virtually illegal. <laughs> it's, it's, hello, can you help me? I've got a Frisky Dingo. Um, <laughs> 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 You've got to do the sucking at the end, haven't you? Yeah. Um, but you kind of think, what a guy, you know. He's he's not he's not held back, is he? He's like he has a show cancelled. Which was yeah. somebody referred to Frisky Dingo. They said it was it was like Archer, but without the mm -hmm. without the jokes. So he hadn't. And I watched a, a couple of clips on YouTube, and he hadn't kind of quite got it right. So that was the the learning curve for for Archer. Um, yeah. But yeah, you, you know the the whole. The whole inspiration was James Bond, but also the Pink Panther, right? The Clouseau thing as well, kind of thing. He, he to take that as a an inspiration. Yes, very understated wit. Um, and we should say you've mentioned FX, haven't you, in terms of the channel? But it is an FX production jointly with Floyd County, which no doubt you've done some research on a company's house. Well, it's American yeah. company, so there isn't any details oh, kept on company's house. But I can it's tell you, um, it's Adam Reed's company. It's his animation company. It started off right. with, um, I think, about eight people, um, yeah. and now it's uh, it's a fully fledged animation production house. So he's he's actually making cartoons for other people now and animated sequences and things like that. So yeah, they've done they've done very well off the back of Archer as well. Mm. Um, and I see it's on Prime Video through Amazon, but you've already referred to D Max and. And you'll put all those links, as you always do, so conscientiously uh, in with the podcast. Well, I'll be honest with you, I'm I'm hooked as well, but I'm a bit worried because I also read that as you get further on through the series, they realise mm. that the um, the secret agent thing was a bit limiting. Right. And so they take it off in all different directions. And I think one of the one of the series he's 
Uh, let me find it here. It says, The show's eighth season, Archer Dreamland, transpires in Sterling's subconscious, reimagining the core cast as stock characters from a noir film set in Gangland 1947 LA. The ninth series, Archer Danger Island, continues this arc as the characters again re-envisioned as inhabitants of a remote South Pacific island in 1939. Mm. And the tenth series, titled Archer 1999, takes place in a retro-futuristic vision of outer space. A bit like Space 1999 by the sound of it, I'm guessing there, with mm. that one. Mm. So it could either wreck it or make it even better, take it to another plane, couldn't it, that kind of thing? Again, watch without... Prejudice, but yeah, for a moment I had one of those fleeting sort of did they jump the shark moments That's... that uh, our listeners will know about. Yeah, or if you don't, go to jumptheshark.com and all will be revealed. Yeah, but yeah, it can either be a sign of desperation or a sign of massive ambition that uh, that can come off. So uh, yeah, I wouldn't know which way they they took it. What do you do? You either go, we can't go on with this, and can it? Or we think the characters have got mileage. Let's change the location, I guess. We forgot to it's mention... the same with marriages, really, isn't it? But, hey, let's not go down that route. We, <laughs> we, forgot, we forgot to mention the ISIS thing as well, which was rather unfortunate for them, wasn't it? was that uh, um, yes. ISIS wasn't a thing. Um, well, certainly wasn't a thing to the, in the, uh, the consciousness of certainly the American people to the stage that it is now um, when they decided to call... Uh, the agency that uh, Archer works for, ISIS. So I think they changed it as time went on and they called it something else. Did they? Yeah. Well, I, I can go one better. I'll raise you a prison in London next to Belmarsh where terrorists are kept, high security prison, but it's mm. next door for younger people and a lower security rating, I think. And that prison is called ISIS. And uh, fact, as uh, Ricky Gervais would say in the guise of David Brent, and on that and bombshell, have... <laughs> is exactly. it? What does it stand for? Do you know? It's from. Uh, I wish I'd had a classical education now, but I believe it's. Isn't it a Greek mythological character or a Greek god? Oh right, okay. I didn't. Uh... And, and you know they've either got to change uh, the letterhead for everything they do in the logo, or they've got to get on the phone to ISIS, the terrorists, and say, "I'm most awfully sorry, but you know." Trade, trading standards, trademarks, and all of that. We were there first. I never understood how it became ISIS anyway, because it's ISIS stands for Islamic State in Syria, doesn't it? Well, does it? I mean, that's probably a translation into English, and it's probably lost something in translation. Because it used to be just called IS, and I don't really know how it got. Yeah, Islamic got State re-branded. or so-called. Yeah, there's so many names, and there's also um, Daesh is another name for it, isn't it? Which sometimes is used by politicians and right. then. I don't know. Anyway, so potato, that, that was potato. their dilemma, and they, they, <clears throat> they just changed it, I think, or stopped referring to it as much, really, I guess. Right. Well, it, we can't put off the evil hour any longer, can we? Mm. Uh, I'm on. surprised it did so well out of you, you know. I really am. I don't... I wouldn't you sound even relieved. Like, I wouldn't, yeah, I am a bit. I wouldn't even... <laughs> I wouldn't even like to guess at a number for you, really, now. I think you're going to have to just put us out of our misery. Well, I, I, I remember thinking first... No... When it was going better second time through, unusually for me, I was thinking, what would I have scored it on the first viewing? And, and the answer would have been two on the first viewing. Okay. It might have gone up to four on the second viewing, but there's a part of me that thinks, yeah, being contrary, I ought to average those to three. But I, I'm i going to give it three and a half. It was a bit of fun. wasn't perfect. What is? Um, won't be racing to watch all 10, 11 series but if it, if it was on and I had the box on and I was in the mood, it would always be watchable, I'm sure. It's going to get a f- four from me. <laughs> oh. And okay. I will be racing to watch it. I've actually, Good. I've actually thought this is something that I'm going to actively seek out and watch. I'm going to start from, uh, well, we've, that was episode, series one, episode one, so I'm going to head to episode two and hope that I'm not disappointed. Um. Which is often the way, isn't it? You know, you watch one episode, and you think, oh, "I really like that," and then the second episode, you think, "Oh, that's the same as what I've just watched. It's a bit boring, a bit samey, or whatever." But yeah, I'm hoping not mm. to be disappointed. Um, I'll give it a four. I'll give it a four. I really enjoyed it. It was probably it's it's not a genre I've ever discovered mm. previously, or even sought out, or can even think of. Can you think of another adult ed- animation that? 
I, I, I'm sure they're out there, but I'm not that familiar with that genre at all. So, um, no, I couldn't think of one off the top of my head. I might when we start recording as these things go, but I'm sure people are shouting at their podcast playing devices. Um, it's definitely an established genre. Um, and it was interesting to tip a toe into it. That's the joy of the comedy slam. You yeah. know, one, one week we're listening to Benny Hill yeah. from 1964. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then we're doing this. Great. Uh, so that was Archer, and uh, as Adrian said, if you want to catch up with it, I'll put the links in there. It is currently in the UK, though, on um, DMAX, which is, let me uh, just pull that up on the monitor, is actually Channel 37 on your free view box, so you haven't even got to pay a penny for it. Now it is the time where Adrian decides my punishment, I mean my entertainment, for next week. If I say to you... I had a beautiful body, would I hold it against you? <laughs> I rather hope you wouldn't. <laughs> but um, now, I was going to say a sketch show, but actually I haven't heard anything from this series, and I believe it's a sketch sitcom hybrid, which itself I think makes it interesting and worth oh, yeah. a go. But anyway, they've been around previously on BBC Radio. It's a duo, a couple of young lads, sketchy fun... Um, do you want to guess at this stage? It's new material they're coming out with. They've got a brand new series. I wouldn't have a clue. Are they well known? Um, I don't think they've, to my knowledge, well, it's, you, know, you might find lots of 20 somethings say, yeah, yeah, all right, mates, listen. Right. Um, but in my circle, no, it hasn't broken out of radio yet, and it hasn't broken big that I'm aware of. And I've not heard Hollywood come knocking or TV in this country. Shall I put you out of yeah, your go on. Put miserliness? Me misery. Put me out of my misery. Um, have you heard of The Pin? No. Just the name of this duo. And they are almost, no, probably exactly as surreal as their uh, sort of trading name. Um, their real names are Ben and Alex. And uh, as I say, I haven't heard anything from this latest series, but what I'm going to point us to is the latest series for... Episode four, so at least that makes it easy to remember. And I'm hoping we'll be able to catch up with it because the, I think the stories will be self-contained. But certainly there is still that sketch element. That's the joy of sketch shows, isn't it? Mm. Um, that you can just dip in and dip out. Although, of course, some shows develop long-term, sort of long-tail characters, which can be interesting, like The Fast Show with Ralph and Ted and all of that. Um, anyway... So, uh, I don't think I need to add an awful lot more except to say, uh, find it on BBC Sounds, that's an app, or you can go online, particularly if you're outside the UK, you should find it at bbc.com, and I believe it's 28 of your Earth Minutes. Nice one. The Pin, that. Series 4, Episode 4, looking forward to that one. A sketch hmm. show sitcom hybrid. Yeah, and I should say it's got a subtitle, that particular episode, Sabotage. Okay. All right. Uh, don't forget, if you want to uh, follow us on uh, Twitter or Facebook or Twitter. Any of them. <laughs> or Facebook. Uh, I then you can going to make up some. Yeah. The, uh, the comedy – just whatever, you, whatever your favourite one is, just type it in. It'll either appear or it won't. The Comedy Slab uh, is the place to find us for all of those. Mm. What's left for me to do? Um Actually, Comedy Slab should find you a bit of everything, really. It'll find you um, Spreaker. It might send you to YouTube. Um, yes, yeah, social media, at uh, Comedy Slab on Twitter, which he's al already mentioned. Um, and uh, a nice uh, dose of stars, uh, a generous star rating on uh, iTunes stroke Apple Podcasts would be warmly appreciated, as would a recommendation to family and friends. That's how we get the word out across the globe. It'd be lovely. Rawr. Lovely. Lovely. We want global domination. So until next time, from me, Shane O'Connor, I am going to be uh, sketching away, uh, and hopefully the Comedy Slab podcast next week will be, uh, uh, what do you call them? A graphic, a graphic podcast. <laughs> yes, I suppose so. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm going to have a little wash, I think, or a shower. It's the heat. <laughs>